A portion of this video is sponsored by Cuts Clothing. The day is finally come. Everyone is ready to finally see the Pixel 5. Then a Google exec gets on stage and they announce nothing. So I know that was a, you know, as I like to do a little dramatic, but bear with me. What if the best thing for Google to do this fall is not announce a new phone? As we share some ways forward for the Pixel line, be sure to subscribe and turn notifications on for the channel. We'll be doing a dream phone giveaway. We hit 1.7 million subscribers. The Pixel line since its inception has been the best way for Google to show what a pure Android experience can look like. And beyond that, it's really been a way for them to like do a hardcore flex for what cameras are capable of. And single lens systems can be so dynamic and take such amazing pictures that not only can Google go head to head with the likes of Apple, Samsung, and LG, in a lot of cases, they could wipe the floor with them. As good as the Pixel line has been, and as much innovation has gone into those devices, there's very little debate they have not been smashing successes for Google. They've been plagued by display issues, quality control issues, launch day issues. There's a litany of lists that have held these phones back from being the Android devices to recommend. So here's what we think we know about the Google Pixel 5. Prevailing thought of what's going to be the Pixel 5 is not the flagship phone. So we will see a new design. We should see a minimum of two cameras on the back. Conflicting reports that the notch will go away in favor of a hole punch display. And perhaps with that, the full facial unlocking that we've seen before. The Project Solly, the radar gesture things that we've seen should also go away as the Pixel looks to move more downstream. And these are all things that we expect. They've heard conflicting rumors about screens and what it's gonna be. I think it's a safe bet we should see at least 90 Hertz. But the biggest change is in that processor, abandoning the flagship Qualcomms, the 865 and 865 Plus that we've seen in sort of this year's crop of big beefy phones, and going for the Snapdragon 765G, phones that are more likely found in mid-range devices, like the OnePlus Nord, for example, a very capable processor in its own right, and for most tasks, extremely fast, but a less expensive and theoretically less capable processor than of course the 865. And I think the pressure here is, is much less and presumably there's also higher margins for Google and if they're making more money on these phones, perhaps they can do a bigger marketing push and sell more of them. There has to be a reason to get the Pixel. And it used to be, I want the best camera, I'm gonna get a Pixel phone. But then the competitors in a lot of ways caught up and that reason, really the only reason to get that Pixel phone wasn't there anymore. So let's put aside the Pixel 5 for a second. We Pretty sure it's coming. But what's another way that Google could go? What if we're in charge of running Google or alternate history? So what if the way forward from Google isn't just to announce a Pixel 5 in the vein of the 4 and that came before it, but to either scratch the entire project or pave a new way forward, but kind of looking back? I think there's a huge case to be made for Google to bring back the Nexus line. Those of you that don't know what the Nexus line was, Google essentially took other manufacturers, so we had Motorola, LG, and Samsung, let them do what they do best, make the hardware, and Google handled the software. And that was an amazing combination that gave us, I think, the best phones that Google has ever been a part of. The Nexus 5 and the Motorola Mate Nexus 6 have such wonderful places in my heart because they were quality devices that worked as advertised and were just beasts to use. I loved those phones. And what better way for Google to sort of get people to still use their apps and services and let other folks use the R&D costs they're already putting in their phones to make those hardware devices that we can eventually put in our pockets. I loved the Nexus line and maybe it's just nostalgia talking, but I would love to see those come back. And speaking of love, perhaps the least successful thing Google ever did, but the most magical, wonderful thing they ever did was GPE edition of phones. Those are Google Play editions. And this was sort of Nexus-y. They would take the actual flagship hardware and they would put Google software on top of that. I mean, so you're getting at the time was the Galaxy S4 hardware 
with stock Android on top of it. Imagine that road where Google flexes their muscles and gets those phones in carrier stores at the time they were just sold online. And again, more people use their phones, more people have access to Google services and more information Google gets. That's where they make their money. I think the environment is ripe and right to learn from the past and bring it back. But what if Google took the best part of the Pixel phone, the camera? It used to be the Pixel Visual Core, now they're calling it the Pixel Neural Core, and license that camera technology out to other manufacturers. Now, people have tried porting the Pixel camera app over to other Android phones. Usually the results are very positive. But imagine if it was done by Google and Google had signed off and created this app that took advantage of the actual hardware that could be in these phones. You could have the Pixel experience on your Samsung, your OnePlus, whatever that might be. That would be perfect. And I've long said that OnePlus had nailed the hardware, but they could have just gotten a better camera. If you take the OnePlus 8 with the Pixel licensed app on it, you could have the perfect phone. It's a great way for Google to spiritually keep the Pixel alive without having to be in the hardware business. If you guys couldn't tell by my videos over the years, like I'm a t-shirt guy. This is what I feel the most comfortable in. And being on camera, I always need shirts without logos. So for a while, I've been buying t-shirts from Cuts Clothing. So actually I reached out to them to try to sponsor a video because I really love their clothes. And this is one of them. They're comfortable, they're soft, they're not very expensive and they wear extremely well. What I love about Cuts and why, I did a ton of research to find shirts that could fit longer torsos uh, is that they work and they look like normal t-shirts. They fit me appropriately. Uh, they have a ton of different styles, ton of different colors. They've got the Henley with the buttons down. They've got elongated, traditional, a bunch, a bunch of different options to fit whatever you want. They even have polos now. Check out Cuts Clothing. In fact, if you go to cutsclothing.com slash John, you'll get 20% at checkout. You don't even have to do anything. Just go to that link, you'll automatically get 20% off. And if you want to use a code instead of going to that link, just use the code John, J-O-N, and you are good to go. We'll put all the information down below. They're awesome. I think they look pretty good. They fit me well. I'd imagine they'll fit you pretty well too. All right, so another way forward. What if the goal of this new line is for Google's engineers to flex what they're capable of, to show what could be done with Android? Very easy to take the Google Glass route and call this new line of phones a developer's edition. Cost isn't an issue here. You can make them as expensive as you want. These are just for developers to learn what could be done and as solely test devices that are made available to the public. And here Google do anything they want. Foldable, rollable, crazy camera systems, radar systems, all the stuff they've clearly wanted to have. They could put in a device where cost isn't an issue. They still get that chance to show what Android can be without having to really worry about sales numbers or quite frankly, bottom lines. And the last option, the last way forward is perhaps initially the least appealing to, to us, the consumer, the folks who love tech. And that's a completely kill the Pixel line. You know, they've killed things before, the Pixel Slate. They've been unsuccessful with a lot of these Pixel focused products. And the Pixel line has really been no exception. So perhaps it's time for Google to cut their losses and move forward with what they do best. Look at what Microsoft did with Windows Phone. Dumped a ton of money in making hardware. They bought companies and they realized it wasn't working, took a step back, and now make some of the best cross-platform apps available. Google could use that as sort of the roadmap for what they can do. Still keep some of the Pixel stuff alive, perhaps in name only and license it out, but remove themselves from the hardware line. They could work to make these Nexus phones, for example. They could make Google Play editions. Whatever happens with the Pixel line moving forward. Google has moved the needle forward for all smartphone makers. If you like and use night mode, you have Google really to thank for pushing other manufacturers to make that happen. If you like computational photography and things kind of happening after the fact, you have Google to thank for really making that more widespread. And I don't know what Google is going to do. But I do know that them being in the space 
has pushed competition to do better things. It's made Apple better, it's made Samsung better, OnePlus and the rest. And I like having someone with such deep pockets like Google be in the space. But having said that, I would understand the decision if they went in a different direction. And regardless of what happens with the Pixel Lion, we do have Google to thank for a lot of the smartphone features that we now take for granted.